Hey guys, so I've been making heaps of progress on the 60. Over here you can see it's starting to really come along and look like a bit of a car. I've got a bunch of parts piled up over here, but you'll have to wait for the next episode to see what we've been up to. And the reason that is, is because this episode, hopefully in the next 10 to 15 minutes or so, we'll be able to go through all the steps needed to design something on computer, get it cut out and just order it and wait for it to arrive at home. So the four easy steps I've come up with for you guys to be able to do at home are, the first step is to, you know, draw up a bracket, measure it up, take a quick sketch, just like, you know, I've been given here by one of my mates. Bit of a rubbish drawing, but I'll ring him and get a few of the measurements this is missing and we'll get this drawn up for him. So step two is to jump on the computer and draw it up on CAD, which obviously we'll go through. Step three is export it into a usable file so that the guys that are doing the cutting for you can actually use it to cut the parts you need. And step four is how to, you know, go about getting a quote and organizing to get stuff cut. And using those four easy steps, hopefully we can cover that in the next 10 or 15 minutes and you'll be able to do this at home in no time. All right, I'll give you a sneaky look. You'll have to forgive me, the uh, high bay that lives here, the LED one that we put in a few years ago, it's already dead. So I'm getting that replaced. So it's a bit dark in the corner here. Of course, it's where I'm working. Uh, motor and box is in, front diff's in, rear diff's sitting in place. We've got another cross member in there. And then over here, we've got a pile of parts. We've got a rim, some shocks, links are there, more shocks, a few adapters and stuff there ready to go. And I've got to go pick up a front diff to put in here. So we've pretty much got everything we need now to put this together and make it a car. The only thing I'm missing still is the actual rubber body mounts I want to use to actually mount the cab. Uh, I've been waiting on a wrecker to pull them out for me for about two months and they're proving, you know, hard to work with. Uh, so if anyone's got any 200 series body rubbers laying around from a ute shop or something, send them my way. I would really appreciate it so we can get a cab on this thing. So step one is measuring up the bracket. Obviously we're not going to need to go through that because you're measuring up your own bracket. I'm not going to help you with that. But once you do have a bit of a sketch, like I've got one here on the computer that we'll use, uh, once you do have that, the next step obviously is to start drawing on the computer. So we need to start with a program. There is loads of free programs on the net that you can download. You know, they some of them are full of ads or you might need to sign up to something. And you, but you definitely don't need to buy a really expensive program or pay for a monthly subscription or anything to simply draw 2D brackets. The more advanced your drawing gets, you might need a you know, more powerful program with more features. But to simply draw you know, a, a rectangle with a hole in it or something like that, you can start with anything. There's even plenty of good apps that you can use on your phone or your tablet. Uh, so I've actually got a guy that sends me plenty of parts that we cut for him and he draws everything on his iPad. His whole front end of his car has been done with it and it's, I think it's worked out. I mean, we've never had to recut too much for him, so, so that's good. So the program we're going to use today is Fusion 360. Uh, it's a free program. There is the ability to pay for a subscription to upgrade it to have more features. Uh, it is, it's quite popular with a lot of my customers, so I thought it would be a good base to use. It has a lot of tutorials on YouTube already on actually like how to use the program itself, so there's a lot of backing there. It's not like a fully fledged program that has every feature you would ever need, it's, and it definitely feels a little clunky to use. Uh, I've only used it for about five minutes, um, and I've got a rundown off my mate who does use it. Definitely at home, if it's free and it gives you all the features you need, it seems like a good base. So obviously the first thing to do is download the program. So I've just jumped on Google, we type in Fusion 360. Search for that. And if we scroll down a bit, it gives you Autodesk Fusion 360 for personal use. So if we click that, there's a button here on the home screen, get Autodesk Fusion for personal use. So if you click that, you'll have to follow the prompts through, you know, create an account, download the program and install it and do everything it says there. Alright, so once you've got that all downloaded and installed and created your little account and stuff, it'll take you to sort of this home screen here where you've got like this grid pattern sort of like floor sort of space going on. And we need to start, you know, essentially drawing something. So at the moment it's in a diagonal view because it's in three dimensional space, but we only need to draw in like a two dimensional space. So at the top here you can see you've got all these different tabs, so your solid, surface, mesh, sheet metal, plastic and utilities. So we're working with sheet metal, so we'll click on that. And then we'll click go across here to create sketch. So now it's going to ask us to which plane we want to use, which doesn't really matter for a two dimensional drawing because it's just a flat drawing we're drawing. But it sort of matters more when you start to integrate multiple parts together to create like a larger assembly. But for this instance, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to click on the top view there. And now it's squared up, so we're ready to draw whatever we need to draw. So if I'm going to draw up this bracket that I got sent through, 
looks something sort of like this. So up the top here you can see there's a whole bunch of buttons that you've been given and it's just like Microsoft Paint now, you just start drawing lines and sort of editing them to, until you get the sort of shape that you're after depending on your bracket. So if I'm going to draw what I've been given here, it looks kind of like this. You don't need to get it perfect when you start. It's more important that you just get the shape you want and then you can start sort of honing it in properly. So you don't need to worry about dimensions until probably towards the end. Um, and you'll notice that it sort of snaps the lines because it's an intelligent program. So see, I've got this line just here, but if we want it to sort of flow into the radius of that circle, if you come around, when you get that feature, that's where you know that it's now um, a tangent junction, so it's going to flow from the straight line into that radius really nice. And then we do one on this side, which is there. And now we'll want to find this uh, up here, trim, so we can trim our circle, so now it looks more like the bracket we're being given, and we can start to add our dimensions. So this drawing I've been given, obviously it's missing a lot of measurements. Uh, there's only one critical number, and that's what he's put in there. And the rest, I spoke to him on the phone, uh, the rest were just a bit rough, it doesn't really matter. So he's given me a tape measure there as a reference and then I can just sort of draw it as I think works good. So now we're gonna go up the top here to this sketch dimension button and start adding some numbers in. So the number for this is 46 mil, which is written, so we'll just type in 46. And now everything else we sort of start to just draw around it. So if we wanna come from this guy here, it'll be what? Half of that circle is going to be 23, so if we make that 30, and then if we make this here, what call it 60? Oh, it's the radius. So if we call that what 30? Maybe it's a little bit close. 35. And then this bottom line here is what's that? 125. And now we just need to give it an end there, like 40. And you'll see now all the lines are black. So what that sort of tells us is the lines are locked in space. They've got enough dimensions to know exactly where they are. Whereas now if I delete that 60 number just there, now these two lines are blue. And that's because, see I can drag them. Oh, stupid program. Yeah, so see I can drag them back and forth. That's because it doesn't really know where this bottom line needs to be yet. But everything else it does, it knows how big this circle is, it knows where this is in reference to the circle and this circle. But it doesn't know it doesn't know this. So if we unless we add this dimension, it won't it won't matter, but it also won't know. So if I add that, and maybe 50 looks better. Yeah, so now we've got that drawn. So now so now the next step is to turn this into a bit of sheet metal on the computer. So then if we come up here and we go back to sheet metal because we're done with our sketch. And we click um, flange. See it's now wants us to pick somewhere. So that's our steel that we want to keep, not the middle of the circle, the outside bit of the circle. Um, one thing it will struggle with is if you leave heaps of random lines and stuff in it. For example, if I get out of this, for example, if I draw another circle here, that'll be fine. You know, it'll just see there's another circle. So now if we go to sheet metal and we click flange, no worries, there's just two circles in our plate now. But what it won't like is if I do a random line from you know, this corner up and to the center. And I just leave that. And then if we go sheet metal and flange, so you see there's this line in the middle here, it might get a bit confused with that. Oh, there you go, it's sort of just ignored it. Fair enough, I've encountered some situations on my mate's drawings where it's sort of freaking out a little bit because there might be like a few in lines intersecting. So you want to try and keep your drawings a bit clean so it's, there's no risk of confusion. So now that we've got this done and we've got essentially you know, a, a bit of steel here, which is the bracket we want, the last thing to do is up here click create flat pattern which will, if it was a folded box or it had any folds in it, it will unfold it and then it will create a pattern that we can cut out. So if we click create flat pattern and say that we want that to go, bang, so now we're looking at it from a 2D view again. 
And then up here we have export DXF. So export, uh, okay. And now it wants you to you know, come up with a name. So we just go up test and I'll save it up to my desktop. Save. So now that's on my desktop as a DXF. So what I mean by that is this is the DXF that we just exported. So you can see here that it's got, you know, the, the shape that we just drew. It's all square, so all the circles are proper circles. They're not like an oval from looking at it on a distorted view. And it'll be super simple because when this gets loaded into the machine to get cut, the CNC machine will just profile along that line. It'll cut these two circles and your part will fall through and you'll be done. This is a good example of a part that I got sent recently to cut. A guy has obviously drawn this and exported it as an engineering drawing, which is not not super helpful to cut uh, on a CNC machine because now it thinks it's got to cut this A over here, it's got to cut this whole rectangle, all this numbering in his drawing is going to get cut and it's not even sure which part is the bit it's trying to keep because there's so many parts within parts. Whereas if we go back to our drawing, it, it works out pretty simply that it needs to keep you know this, this middle body here and these circles will fall through. So when it starts the cut, it will want to start it in here and then work its way out so that it doesn't damage the material we're keeping. But on this one, it won't know because there's so many parts within parts here. Like here's a circle within this shape, which is in within this shape. And then within that is this shape. So it'll just get a bit confused and you'll end up with just a bunch of random crap cut throughout a bit of steel and then it'll just be a waste of money. And all these dimensions, you know, if you've exported it correctly, they don't matter. If you want to check them, you could send this through as a PDF as well, and that way the guys can check that that's what you've actually sent, if you're not sure. And that way, you know, down here we can see that he wants to have five mil and stuff. But for cutting, you just want this, as simple as it can be. So now the last step is to obviously send it off for cutting. So you now have to work out whether you're gonna get something plasma cut or laser cut. Uh, there's a few differences between the two, and some of them outweigh each other depending on what you're using. It's not always one is better than the other. Uh, you'll find that plasma cutting is a lot more available because the machines are a lot cheaper. Uh, there is a lot of cheaper Chinese sort of laser cutters out there these days. Uh, I've had a few things cut by some locally and like, to, well, to be honest, we actually got something cut the other day and it wasn't even square. I don't know, their machine must have run out so it wasn't even usable and it was a, a jig frame. So. Although sometimes you know, laser cutting quality is definitely better than plasma cutting, the quality of the machine also matters. So that's something to take into consideration. Typically the plasma cutting machines are gonna be cheaper, so they're gonna be more readily available, especially if you might live somewhere remote. You know, the local engineering joint probably will have a plasma, but they probably won't have a laser unless it's a big place because it's more money. Um, the turnarounds are usually quicker because it's a smaller machine. Uh, and it might be a smaller shop, they can pump them out for you. You know, if you send them something during the week, they can probably have it done for you on Friday. But if you send it to a laser cutter that is busy and you know, might do minimum quantity orders or minimum job pricing or whatever, they might have like a three week turnaround. And if you just want two little brackets cut, it's gonna seem like you might as well not do it, you just cut it by hand. So there's that. If you do want something that is super accurate uh, that you don't have like a lot of tolerance for, you're gonna to wanna to go to like a laser cut part because the laser cutting is definitely more accurate. But if you just simply want like a rectangle you need to weld in or something with a basic hole, plasma cutting is plenty good enough. Um, you might just have to clean the hole up a little bit if it ends up a little bit undersized on the back side from the kerf. Uh, and you'll also find the cost because the laser cutter is way more expensive to buy. Obviously running it, the guys are gonna charge more when they're cutting parts because they've got to pay their machine off which is fair enough, you're getting a better quality part and they've got to pay for their machine, otherwise they might as well not bought it. But you will also find that a lot of those guys, because the laser cutter is like a professional, you know, I just cut, la I just laser cut stuff, they're probably, if they're running like an efficient business model, they're gonna to wanna to fill sheets as they cut them. So either you send them 100 parts or you're gonna wait till someone else or sends them stuff and cut it all together and you're gonna to have to wait a while. So that's definitely a problem. Um, and the other thing is, if you're ordering it from somewhere, there's no need to go to the guy down the street that's charging you $1,000 to cut four brackets because he doesn't want to do it. It's not a big deal to, you know, like we cut stuff for all around the country. If you just email someone in a different state and it's only three little brackets, it's not going to cost a lot in freight to send it back. And if they have a better turnaround time or something like that, it's, uh, it's not a big deal. So I hope that helped you guys and you might have learned something in, if, if you've been considering doing it and you can sort of see how easy that just was to draw quite a simple bracket. So if that was helpful, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be releasing a lot more videos like this, you know, helping guys at home sort of create better quality stuff so that, you know, 
everyone's game sort of lifted.